10th variation. This variation combines spiccato with slurred notes. If you're not that familiar with spiccato, I would suggest check out the video I made on the second variation because I go into a lot of detail there how to build up the spiccato, which you should ideally be able to do a little bit already if you practice this variation. Remember, if you practice spiccato, the slower you play, the closer you go to the frog, the higher you bounce and the more finger action you have with your right hand. The faster the spiccato gets, the closer you go towards the middle, the finger action becomes passive and you don't bounce as high, you let the bow bounce on its own and your finger action becomes a passive movement. That's the principle of it. So to start off, it's a good idea just to practice spiccato. Start slowly. You see I'm using a lot of finger action and directing the bow. When you get faster, it becomes more passive and I've wandered away from the frog, I'm about at the point of balance. And if you get even faster, then you go even more towards the middle. The movement is exactly the same, it's just no longer as active and as large but it's a passive movement and if you go really fast then you go towards the middle you don't jump as high and let the bow take over more or less the movement on its own your fingers are only reacting so it's a good idea to start off practicing just that to get a feeling for spiccato and then you build in one long note because in the variation we have spiccato notes combined with slurred notes so you don't want the bow to bounce when you're slurring, but you want it to bounce again when you're playing spiccato. So a really good way of practicing it is like this. Very important, after the last note, do not lift before the first spiccato note. It's now the bow change happens on the string and the change of direction brings the, uh, the bow up away from the string. Same here. Now the important thing is not to use too much bow for your long note because otherwise you will move away from the place where the spiccato is most comfortable. So at this speed you see, just below the point of balance is the most comfortable place to do spiccato at this speed. So, I don't want to move away too far because then up here, it doesn't work. So use very little bow for the long note. You can build up the speed with that. from bouncing on the long note is to come from a little bit higher up and add a bit of weight so you slightly drop your arm it won't be enough to be visible but think about dropping your arm perhaps practice it once in an exaggerated way where you go drop just to get a feeling for the different angle and feeling of the arm when you're doing spiccato and when you're playing on the string. So those are good preparatory exercises and uh, practice that bowing in scales so that you get completely familiar with the bowing before you start actually practicing the variation. This variation is very useful at just about any speed. It doesn't matter whether you do it very slowly or whether you do it all the way up to speed, you're working at your bow technique. So don't worry about it if you can't get it up to speed the first time around. Start off slowly and remember to not to use too much bow for the slurred notes, otherwise you will travel away from the point of the bow where spiccato works best. And remember to lift the bow after the first spiccato note following the slur and not before. So start off at a slow, comfortable speed where you're still very actively directing the bow with very active finger action of your right hand. Start off slowly. Practice 
practicing that at this speed correctly with the finger action is already doing a lot for your bow technique just to bring things into proportion here it's also not very easy now a very good thing to practice is just the slur and the next note coming so start at the beginning and then practice this because you have a string change if you use this fingering and then lift the bow after the C, not before. Do not go because then you're coming from above and you don't have any security. So practice that. And then I found it very helpful to practice it that way. Now, when you speed it up, remember to move away from the frog a little bit and let the bow take over more of the bouncing and your finger action, while as the movement stays the same, it becomes smaller and more passive. So that will be... Here too, practice the slur. Make sure you still know what you're doing and make sure you feel comfortable with the speed. It doesn't help to practice it too fast too soon because you need to control the bow in this variation a lot.